Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a spotlight on Out There Omega. This is a game that was originally released for iOS and Android devices that they are now porting over to PC. Currently it's available through their website outtheregame.com through a humble widget. It's available for $9.99 and that gets you the pre-order of the game, you get access to the beta, and you also get the Android version as well. So you can install that presumably through the humble Android app, or I guess technically you could just download the APK onto your phone and install it that way. Unfortunately, you can't do that with the iOS build because iOS is really restrictive when it comes to that. So what is this game? Well, it's kind of been described as FTL without the combat. As you can see, the screen is very simple and the buttons are very big, so you can kind of tell right from this screen that it looks like it was designed for mobile devices. But it does hold up for PC, except there's no settings, like you can change the language, that's pretty much it. Not, not a whole lot going here, like ideally they get off their butts and put in, you know, audio options, resolution options, something on the main page. But let's start in here. We're just gonna hit a quick start. This is a roguelite style game. So very similar to FTL, where you start off and you have to make it to the end. So here we are. What do we have? We have our ship which is currently in this star system. This is your starting star system. This green area is the space that you can jump. And this whitish area is where you can view, as long as you have a telescope. Uh, let's go into ship view here. So this is our ship. You have your resources and your equipment, and they all share the same slots. So unlike FTL, where they have their rooms, and you don't really have an inventory, like you have your fuel, but you just stock fuel. And you've got your hull, and you, you can't really repair your hull-ish. It's been a while since I played FTL, and if you're familiar with me and FTL, you realize that I don't particularly give a shit about it. I, it's not bad. I can't say anything bad about FTL. It's just not my thing. And this takes FTL and strips out what I consider to be the most interesting part of FTL, which is unfortunate. But it does add inventory management. Yay. Nothing I like more than inventory management. So you have your fuel, which is you've got hydrogen and helium that you can use as fuel. If you get helium, that that one, as far as I can tell, that one's better. Hydrogen gives you one, helium gives you four fuel. And of course, for some reason, right off the bat, you start off with 10 fuel gone. So, oh, sorry. Hydrogen gives you five or two, not five, two. You've also got oxygen which is obviously used to replenish your oxygen. So there's no oxygen recycler. As far as I've come, there is no oxygen recycler at all. Now, that's not saying very much because I haven't gotten all that far. And then you've got iron. This I think is quite nice. You harvest the iron and you can use that and you put it into the iron slot here and it repairs your hull. But you also use it for crafting. So each one of these slots can be used for inventory. No, trying to move it there. A few things that need to be worked out. So if, apparently, if you have it mostly in, but not quite, I can't even, there we go. So I guess it's halfway. It considers it dropped. So at least it asks you. It asks you if you want to drop it or split it. And you can get that same just by clicking and releasing. So you can split or drop and it tell, asks you what you want to split it and you can split it. 
No, I'm trying to stack it. And you can stack it. So here's your that's your inventory. The rest of the slots, if you click on them, it goes into the technologies area where it allows you to build. Currently, I can't build anything because the only thing I can build is this cryonics, which gives you a little bit of a blurb about it. You know, during, this device places me in cryostasis during long jumps, such as the trip from Earth to Jupiter. Well, you have a space folder, so it's pretty much obsolete. I, I don't know if this actually helps you conserve oxygen on jumps from star to star. So far, I haven't noticed, but I haven't used it. I haven't had it enough to really be able to honestly say that it doesn't do anything. At that point, I was really low on everything, so it's kind of moot. So let's go to the star system map. So this is where we start. There's this little space station. So we can orbit that and we can do pretty much nothing in this spaceship. This is the, if I hit new game instead of quick start, it would have gone through and explained the story behind this. This is where you get your space folder. Simple as that. So let's go into the planetary or the system map. What do they actually call this? I don't know what they call this. I can't remember. And that's my mouse acting up right there. So the only places we can go are to these two planets. But you can look at the other ones. So you've got a yellow dwarf here, a red dwarf there, a supernova, which I've yet to go into a supernova area, a neutron star, a red giant, a red dwarf, and a blue giant. Interesting. Not that those matter because I can't go to any of them. And then there's that blue giant. So each one of these stars has different aspects to them. So I believe yellow dwarfs are fairly safe. Not a whole lot. And I think that that is where you'll most likely to find a planet with a breathable atmosphere. So let's head over there and you just go over there. There's no fancy animation like there is in FTL. And it gives you a basically a random story. You know, another astounding tale. I came across a huge energy ball, shining and colorless, that seemed alive. It grabbed my ship with curiosity. Lots of dot dot dots. <laughs> with dot dot dot. Curiosity. I... what? <laughs> Since I was sure I was living my last moments, I quickly put on my spacesuit. Smart move because it took me out of the ship to buy some kind of teleportation. I was extremely examined briefly, then fled, then it fled, and it took me several hours to get back to the back to the ship. Weird. What? <laughs> and apparently used 20 of my oxygen. Cuz they're dicks. Whatever it was that just kidnapped me was a dick. So what do we got here? We've got the sun, which is rich in fuel, except currently you can't harvest it. If I went there, I would be severely damaged. My hull would be very, very damaged. And very possibly, I don't think I'll, it would be with the yellow dwarf. I don't think I'd be pretty much destroyed right off. Uh, but it would hurt. It'd probably take me down to like half or just below half and rich in fuel. Well, it's not because I can't harvest it. So ignore the sun at first. <laughs> this is what I've learned, ignore the sun. So the planets, we've got a rocky planet, which is rich in metallic ore, and then a gas giant, which is rich in fuel. And I'm gonna be honest here, this is a bullshit. Rich in fuel, my ass. So to get there, to get to any of these planets, it's going to cost 10 fuel and 6 oxygen. This is going to cost actually more. And we'll get to that in a minute. And let's go to the gas giant. So here we are in orbit of the giant of gas. And it looks really cool. Like, graphically, I think the game looks amazing. It really does have kind of the FTL vibe, but it has its own 
little art style to it. It's really quite nice. And everything seems to work well. So here we have, you know, it's going to cost us five fuel to reach a depth of five kilometers on this planet. Now, you can slide this up and you can slide it down. You can go one kilometer and you can see that the bar changes. So right now it's green, then yellow, then red. So depending on the depth depends on the likelihood of you taking damage to your probe. And the more damage it takes, well, the more likely it is that it's going to be destroyed. There's basically three states, working, damaged, and gone, just gone. So I usually stick to five kilometers because it's about halfway. Well, it's exactly halfway because you go up to 10, but we're going to launch the probe and we've got nine helium. This was actually a really good, really good run, to be honest. Normally, I won't get that much. Like, as a general rule, I found that I'll get maybe 10 hydrogen. It's kind of pathetic. So, we're doing good there. Now, this is where I actually like this. If I do this again, I'll get less. So you can see here I got significantly less. I still got quite a bit. So I might actually do this one more time because I've used, this will be 15 fuel that I've used. And I got, yeah. What is this? What did I say? These were four. So yeah, so I still made back if, the, if this is actually four. I made back the amount of fuel that I've used because I used 15. I basically made that back in the last run. So as you can see, each consecutive time you harvest the planet, you get less and less, which is kind of cool, although doesn't really make a lot of sense in my mind. I don't know why I didn't stack those in the first place, because it's a gas giant. It's going to have a lot of gas. I don't think we would have uh, sucked down an entire gas giant. So uh, this is another thing. This is a thing that I don't like. If I drop this entire stack in here, it will use it all. Even if I take it out, it will just use it all up until it's full. Not a huge fan of that. That's a thing that I don't particularly like. I'd like to be able to, if I put it in and then I want to take it out, it should stop as soon as I take it out so that I don't have to split the stack. You know, I don't want to have to do that. I'm capable of taking it out. And that doesn't, I don't understand why that wasn't in there because you can do that on a tablet as well or a phone or whatever. So let's hop back out to here and let's go back into the uh, system view here. And we'll head over to the rocky planet. So still gonna cost us 10 and six. So let's hop over here. And now we're in orbit. And this is where things get a little bit more expensive. So we're gonna hit land and it's gonna cost us four fuel to land. So these are things you have to watch out for. And then you can drill and drilling just like collecting your fuel, drilling takes fuel, makes sense. And again, the deeper you go, the more likely you are to take damage. Again, I like to stick to five. Uh, presumably, the farther in you go, the more likely you are to get more material or and or better material. But every time I've tried to go higher, I've been unlucky and my drill has broken or been destroyed. So I like to stick to five. I've only had it uh, get damaged once at five. So what did I get? 17 silicone and eight iron. Let's do that. Uh, another thing I would like to see is with this, like if I put this here, it's gonna stack it to 20 and put the rest over there. Wouldn't mind being able to, if I, if I split this 10 to 10, so if I have this here and I pop it here, I wouldn't mind it auto stacking that would be nice. This works too, but 
that's kind of a wishless item that I would like. So we've drilled here, so we're good. So we're gonna take off. And this is where things get hairy and I have uh, messed this one up. So to take off, it requires four fuel and six oxygen, where it only took four fuel to land. So you got you got to be wary of that. So it took 10 to get here, took eight fuel to land and take off, and took another five fuel to do the drilling. So getting metal is a lot harder. So that's not what I wanted. I wanted to come in here. So we've got, we're down to 50% oxygen. So oxygen is a two to one. So that 20 turned into 40, which is fine. A little, little confusing because it's only oxygen you can use. Iron is again, two to one. And you can use that to repair. And let's use the helium. Despite the fact that it is a lot more, I'm going to keep the hydrogen because reasons. That's pretty much all I got. So at this point, I have silicone and iron. So I can actually go in and create my cryonics. But first, because I actually want to take a look at this. So let's pick this planet here. This is going to take six oxygen and 17 fuel. So if I go back into here and let's create our cryonics. Now we have our cryonics. So logically, if the cryonics is actually working, this should take less oxygen, but it's not. It's still going to take 17 fuel, six oxygen. And that's a red dwarf. Let's go to the red dwarf because reasons. So let's head over here. So the devices here are constantly submitted to cosmic rays. Metals vaporize and fill the air with strange smells. A nice change from the constant smell of sweat. Of sweat. Uh, sweet? Yeah, sweat. Brain derp. I can smell burnt, no. I can smell burnt sugar and the delicate salty scent of an invisible sea. What is this guy smoking? Seriously? What kind of sugar is on his spaceship? All right, so we've got two rocky planets and a gas giant. So basically this is kind of standard. You'll generally have one to two planets. Almost always you'll have a gas giant and a rocky planet. Very rarely do you get one with a breathable atmosphere. I find those are quite rare. Pretty much everything in this is randomized as well. As far as I can tell, there's nothing static about anything except the beginning. Everything else is random, and I am going to end up going into one of these suns eventually, because, <laughs> God, why not? So, at this point, you get to pick which planet you want to go into. So, they're both rich in metallic ore. There's nothing here signifying any kind of difference between them. And then the gas giant's just a gas giant. It's a risky atmosphere, rich in fuel. So we might as well do this one first, because why the hell not? So we took actually quite a bit of damage there. So let's probe again. And we didn't really get a whole lot. So I'm not going to waste my time doing another one. But I am going to use up that. And that. And I'm going to use up all of my iron because I can. And that just saves me a spot. Not necessarily the best idea. Actually, okay, it's a pretty bad idea because chances there's a good chance that my drill will break when I go onto one of these planets. Uh, so this was a planet similar to the one we went on. So I'm going to go on this planet, see if it's any different. All right, so let's land. It's going to cost us another four. And it's effectively the same planet. <laughs> same background, complete with a planet in the background with a ring. But we're going to drill, see what we've got. More silicone. I'm going to leave the silicone because I don't really... Eh, no, nah, we'll, we'll stock up to 20. 
As far as I've gotten, we don't need that much silicone. That is a stupid amount of silicone. I would rather much more iron, but we weren't very lucky. Uh, for the hell of it, I'm going to drill again. We got HF. I don't know what HF is. There we go. Half Hafnium? This is a very rare metal. It is of critical importance to every device related to energy production. Alright. I'll keep it. Sure, but it's going to be dumped <laughs> as soon as I need the space. So, let's head out. So at this point, we're starting to run low on oxygen, so we need to find an oxygen supply. Unfortunately, there's no way to know where there's oxygen. This is a neutron star. Like I said, I think the yellow dwarfs are more likely to get oxygen. But not really sure on that. So we're going to head to the neutron star because it's a neutron star. Everybody loves neutron stars. And we have a breathable atmosphere, a gas giant, and a rocky planet. So let's hop down. Actually, first, let's get some fuel in us because we are eating that fuel up. So unlike FTL, you actually have fuel, <laughs> not just each jump is one fuel. Um, what do we got? What can we do? I'm not going to bother. Yeah, I'm not going to bother with anything. Let's just head over to the, the garden planet. Actually, now let's do this guy first. That way, we use up some of our oxygen. So, not bad, not great. And let's go back here. So, effectively, I'm trying to use as much oxygen as I can. Because once we go down, you'll, you'll understand why once we go down. Grab that. Uh, I'm not going to make it far enough to use that. <laughs> so let's, let's drill again get some more iron iron is something that you need iron and fuel let's take off I am kind of wasting fuel but I also at this point don't particularly care so what we're going to do fuel is running low so let's hop that in there and for the fun of it we'll just repair repair ourselves a little bit so let's land on the gas planet and watch our oxygen when we do. So we're going to land. It's going to take four fuel and ten hull damage. Wow. I don't remember actually seeing that, but probably because I didn't pay attention. So we took damage, and as you can see, our oxygen tanks have been 100% refilled. Now, when you're on these planets, you can encounter life. And they say something, but you don't understand. So, you, you got this garbage, and you can either approve or disapprove. I'm going to disapprove. And the alien doesn't want to talk to me anymore. And I have learnt a new, wor new word. I rather whatever is want. <laughs> uh, from what I can gather, every one of the species on all the planets, except for you, speak the same language, which is kind of weird. So again, on this, you can drill. So we're going to drill. And what do we get? We got, I believe this is just carbon. Yeah, carbon. I don't know what that's used for. We got five whole oxygen <laughs> yeah and four gold which I'm gonna leave because I've never seen a use for it probably because I haven't gotten far enough but I'm not gonna waste my whole space on something I don't have a use for except for apparently that one thing and then again this is gonna take six oxygen to go up and four fuel so already 
we're using our oxygen. So that is basically what the oxygen that we gathered. Kind of pathetic. I don't know why we couldn't scoop up the oxygen. I'm assuming that that's an upgrade that you get later on as you get more technology. That's an assumption because I don't have anything here. And I'm not sure how this is going to go. Like this, the way this is laid out, it almost seems like that's, that's it. That's all you're going to get. Because there's not a whole lot of space that they can put things. Although technically they can put a scroll bar on. And there's enough, enough room here. But I don't know. I've never gotten any new technology. So let's hop out here and see what else we've got. Red Giant we've been to. Let's go into a Supernova. This could end us right here, but that's fine. Ah, what a beautiful planet. Sa Savannah g grasses. Yeah. Drop some iron. What? The cr creature grasps my ship and effortlessly lifts it up. Holy crap. It snaps off the nose of my ship like it was peeling a giant banana. It starts chewing on it. Okay. That's, that's not good. We're going to take off and leave. While this horrible monster peels my ship like fruit, I try to reach the controls with great effort and manage to do it and start the engines. And I took 25 damage and lost 5 fuel. It's not bad for, you know, something peeling my ship. Not to mention, this doesn't look like a supernova. You know, you know I guess the swirling of gases. So what do we got here? We've got a garden planet. Rocky, gas giant. Well, let's, let's repair our hull. Give us some, give us some stuff. We'll just use up what we've got. And let's go and see if we can do something on this planet. Thank you for telling me. Every time you get on the planet, it tells you that it's refilled your oxygen supply. It's encountered life. Wow, that's an interesting creature. Let's approve. Alien doesn't want to talk to you anymore. I have no idea. I have never gotten anything other than that, whether I approve or disapprove. Uh, if you're familiar with anything else that I do that's random, I usually pick the wrong one. So, yeah, there we go. Let's do a quick drill. Get some oxygen. I don't know how you get oxygen with a drill, but sure. Whatever. And... Actually want to go here... Let's get some let's get some fuel. Nice. Barely worth it, but let's just crank this. We're going to see if I can do this at 10. Oh no, a sudden pressure surge destroys my probe. I was quite shaken as well. I have to rebuild it. And equipment needs repairing is oxygen probe. Or not oxygen probe. So it didn't actually destroy it. So I need two iron in order to repair this. So in order to repair it, I need to go to this planet. Let's pop this stuff in there. And we're going to land. We're going to drill. And just for the hell of it, we're going to drill. And... Rock layers, harder rock, broke my drill. Digging this deep can be hazardous. Some equipment has been destroyed. So in this case, my drill has been destroyed and I gained one iron. But I got a butt ton of resources. I don't know what these are. Thorium, okay. And tungsten, cool. You would expect tungsten to be needed a bit more. So at this point, we're going to take off. Our hull is almost gone. Our fuel is pretty well depleted. But we have some iron. So let's repair this guy, because why not? So that's all there is to it. You just click on it, click repair. You can also dismantle things. 
So in the case of the cryonics, if I dismantle it, I'll get one silicone. Whereas if I built it, where is it? You use one silicone and three iron. And the drill is four. So we're just we're gonna create the drill again because now we got a full house. And there are other ships. I should specify there are other ships that you can acquire. Like I acquired one that had like a plus sign inventory set up, which had less inventory than this, but it had a shield generator. I think it was a shield generator. Uh, or better, like a stronger hull. Something that reduced its damage, which was quite nice. Like if we go back to the ship, the power, ecosystem, and resistance. Each one of those was actually higher, was actually larger, but it had less storage space. If I'm remembering it correctly. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use up the rest of my iron to repair my ship. Get us uh, as high up as we can go. And I'm going to show you the surface of the sun. So we're going to go into the supernova. Very dangerous atmosphere. Mm. These aren't very descriptive. I would expect the supernova to be like suicidal <laughs> or just you're going to die. There, some of them seem a little weird. Like this is a risky orbit. I've seen suns that have like just dangerous or just, just weird, but we're going to head over here and that took 82 damage. And as you can see, there's not a damn thing we can do. We can't send our probe down to get uh, any kind of fuel from it, even though it's very rich in fuel because, you know, it's a sun, although it is a supernova, so it's kind of dying. But anyway, so that's pretty much the game in a nutshell. There is no combat. Pretty much all interaction is on the planet, and it's a peaceful interaction. There's no... You know, where FTL had a very, very good reason for you to be buggering off. This is you got lost. <laughs> and yeah, that's pretty much it. You got lost. Whoop -de -doo. So, yeah, it's interesting if this is kind of your type of thing. That's great. I can't really see anything majorly wrong with it. Aside from like lack of options menu, like if I hit escape nothing happens um yeah there's really nothing here hit the pause nothing <laughs> the send feedback put options anyway that's pretty much it available for 9.99 off their website i believe it will be coming to steam they have been greenlit um yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed and we will see you next time.